I feel so honored and I feel so grateful to have worked with the legendary Ridley Scott on this film. And, and just in general, I mean, he's someone that I would describe as a architectural visionary. Uh, he's painterly in the way that he approaches his films. He's also a mathematician and the camera work is geometry. And he also understands the uh, emotional quotient of a script and how to work with the actors and navigate uh, what we're trying to say, the story we're trying to tell. And also he doesn't have, I don't feel, this preconceived idea that's so nailed down when you walk on set that there can't be spontaneity. He, there's all this room that he makes for humanity and for humor. And in this film, I felt that with an already great script, he gave us the space for it to be fun. If I could describe Ridley, it's almost as though we as the cast were all different instruments. And when I say different instruments, I mean in an orchestra. There's everything from the drums, to the bass, to the brass, to the woodwinds, the strings, right? And because we're all so different as actors, this movie is him conducting a symphony of all these different musical parts. And he does it in a way that only he can do. And I feel that the edit was in some ways handmade to support the performances of every actor and support the true essence of the film. Essentially, there was all these f sort of famous dynasties in Italy, and Gucci was one of them. And what we watch is an outsider, Patrizia Reggiani, come into the family and uh, grab a hold of Maurizio. They have a sexual love. They have a uh, wild, youthful love. And what I think most people might perceive about the film before they see it is that she was a gold digger. But when they got married, his family had turned their back on him. So she didn't marry for money, she married for love. This is a story that chronicles everything that happened from the time that they met to the time that he died and what took place business-wise within the family, how she got involved, how things became complicated, how he changed, how he morphed, and how her heart was broken. And I think the story shows a woman pushed over the edge, uh, a woman that is adhering to a, a, you know, cl a classist society in a way where she's trying desperately to transgress her class, but she's never as shiny as the Gucci. She's always an outsider. She never really fully makes it. And because they are all obsessed with something that's inherently evil, which is money and privilege and power, while they're all fighting over Gucci, they don't recognize the real disaster, which is that she's falling apart. In addition to working for six months on a Northern Italian accent, before we started filming for three and a half months, um, I read every exposition that I possibly could, uh, anything that I could find that didn't have too much of an opinion. But then I lived in Italy for a short period of time and I walked all around Italy, even during a red zone and whatever place was open, I would go inside and I would say, I'd have my mask on and no one knew who I was. And I would say, what do you know about Patrizia Gucci? What I find intriguing about the film is that as you watch her in the beginning, I think that almost in any given movie where you see a woman with such powerful energy, you assume that there's this like gold digging, sexual, risky undertone, when actually uh, I view her very differently. I think she was just trying to matter. And it was almost embarrassing. 
She wanted so much to be taken seriously by Maurizio's father, by uh, Maurizio's uncle, and even to have some kind of power over his cousin. She was smart and she felt that she knew what to do in order to inspire the company to be greater. But it was really an illusion because they were all just using her to get to Maurizio. To make a movie about real Italians that uh, is about a crime, but is about a family. And it's about Italian business. And this nature of the transfer of power and the balance and how it can not just destroy the family, but how things that are important can go unnoticed. And I think that's the power of a woman. I think a power, the power of a woman can very often go unnoticed. Working with Salma Hayek was incredible. And, you know, if I could express the scale, to work with somebody like Al Pacino and have him say to you, this is not a girl's game, Patricia. And then to work with Salma Hayek and have her be on my side to uh, fight against this systemic patriarchal system. This is the seesaw that she was in the middle of. And ultimately she just tipped all the way in the other direction and she, she lost her mind. It was not that she wasn't motivated by this idea that she could be bigger than what she already was, but that she also loved him and really felt that she didn't belong. So what I think you see on her face in those scenes is, I don't belong here, but I'm intrigued by this, and I'm going to do everything that I can to just be as quiet as possible while I deal with the fact that nobody here is recognizing that me and Maurizio just got married. No one's complimented me about our wedding. And I'm going to really do my best to fit in. And I think this is something that is consistently important about her as a character is what does it mean to not feel like you're doing anything wrong by loving somebody that has more than you? What does it feel like to want something more for yourself in life? I loved working with Jonty Yates. I mean, she is an absolute genius. She was wonderful to work with. We did everything from wearing vintage clothing uh, to archive Gucci, to things that I had from my own collection, to custom pieces that, um, someone from my team, from House of Gaga, made for me on set. And they were custom pieces to make exact replicas of something that Patrizia Gucci had worn. I have to say that my favorite thing about the way we worked, Frederick Aspiris did my wigs and hair, Sarah Tano did my makeup. It was like a science lab. And what was most important was that it never got in the way of the story. I never wanted anyone to see her on camera and just be staring at her clothes, staring at her hair, staring at her makeup. And I have to hand it to them. I think that everybody did a really elegant job, a very nuanced job. My favorite outfit that I wore was uh, when I wore a teal blue plunging neckline uh, dress that I wore while pregnant dancing with Aldo uh, at uh, Studio 54. I also really loved this uh, pink jacket that I wore with lace on it while I was talking to Maurizio and Domenico about uh, uh, Paolo starting a trade war. I loved working with Jared. Uh, he was wonderful on set. He was so committed to his role. Um, I appreciate him uh, very much because I also like to not break character. So we had a lot of fun together, always in character together. He gave a very brave performance 
And it's also not easy uh, from experience, from my own art and wearing prosthetics during Born This Way, my album. Uh, it can be very claustrophobic. And he really worked through, I think, so much to make his character come to life. And he also was equally loving to everybody around him. And he created uh, a, a really lovable character. Oh, I loved working with Adam. I, I think he's one of the most brilliant actors on the earth. I think that he has a way of approaching a script that is unparalleled. He's, he's both emotional and academic. He's in intellectual as well as uh, deeply visceral. Uh, I loved getting to know him. I appreciated that he worked with me as well as someone that was in character all the time, that he made space for me and upheld that part of me while we were working. She knew she mattered at some point to the family, I believe, but to the business, it was clear that she didn't matter, even though she had a tremendous influence on him. And she was his, um, his confidant and his advisor. You know, she used to always say that I, w I used to advise Maurizio in business. It's remarkable to me that even with her advisement and even with the fact that he went through with all the things that she suggested that he do, that there really was an illusion of power. She was, she was strong, so he loved her strength, but also, she was kind of inherently weak because she was a woman in a man's world. And there was only so much she could do, as many women know. I believe people should go to the theater to see this film because not only is it unlike any Italian film I've ever seen, or any film about an Italian family or Italian crime that I've ever seen. It's so fun and it's so humorous. And in a almost post COVID world, we all deserve a laugh, a laugh followed by a tear, a grave moment followed by a joyful one and a sigh of relief. I think people should go out to see this movie because they will have a genuinely good time. It is, it is such a wild ride and every second of it is entertaining. I think one of the things I'm proudest about in this movie is even with all of the artistic ways that I just adore Ridley and adore this film, it blows my mind how entertaining he made this film. It blows my mind what a blockbuster it will be in people's hearts. And it was designed to be that way. And that's, that, I believe, is part of his magic and his love. I would like to highlight uh, the sadness of a woman shattered, the realization that she had that she didn't matter to any of these men, especially to the one she loved the most. And I would like to shine a light on our ability to have compassion even for the most despicable humans. I found a way to love her. I had to. In order to play her, I had to love her. But I also realized in a really terrifying way that when you are so hurt that you hurt other people, you're really hurting yourself. 